Hello everyone, it's me, Mason Mike again, and I'm here for my next Star Wars review. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving, for those of you who celebrated it. So, funny enough, I actually watched this, the last movie about a week ago, and I didn't get to it, mostly because of a lot of reasons. Uh, I was got sick, I was tired when I first recorded it, and it just insecurity has kept me from coming back to making another video. I really wish I could just make videos and just shoot the shit without having to worry about what other people will think of me. Not that anyone will really care or watch these. Yeah, I'm just very insecure about talking with other people about things, but that's neither here nor there. So, I'm going to sit here, hopefully finish this video, and not try to take 5,000 different takes on this. So, here we go. So, this is my review on The Return of the Jedi. So, Return of the Jedi is the third and final movie of the original Star Wars trilogy. In that, it follows the characters Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and, and all their friends as they go to the, rescue their friend Han Solo from the notorious space criminal known as Jabba the Hutt. In the meanwhile, the Empire has, has built a second Death Star, more powerful than the last. Darth Vader has brought his master, the Emperor Palpatine, in to oversee the completion of the weapon and finally destroy the Rebellion once and for all. And the Rebellion has learned of this second Death Star, and they hoped they put in the plans of defeating it and hopefully putting, defeating the Empire or just delivering a very de devastating blow to them once and for all and hopefully turning a great tide into the war. Meanwhile, Luke is having trouble. He's nearing the completion of his Jedi training, but he's, he doesn't know what he should do because Darth Vader has look, taught, told him that he is his father. Or how will, and what will he do when he has to defeat him? So the final battle between the Empire and the Rebellion is fought, and the fate of the universe from then on is decided. So, so the thing with The Return of the Jedi, unlike the first two movies, New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, which were both universally loved, this one was not as well-liked. It wasn't overly hated, for the most part, but it wasn't as well-liked as, as every other Star Wars, or the first two Star Wars movies. I I feel like a, a lot of people are a little too harsh on this movie. While I understand a lot, some of the criticisms, like I don't know, I don't really know why people were so negative, weren't were as positive toward this one. Was it because it was had a more lighter tone than in The Empire Strikes Back? Which I understand. When Star Wars gets dark, it gets really gripping when it's put in the right hands. I really should try the. Try the Knights of the Old Republic games. I really, I really should. It's kind of a crime that I haven't played those yet. Yeah, I feel like people are a little too harsh on this movie because, for my opinion, I actually you think that Return of the Jedi is my favorite Star Wars movie, especially my favorite of the original trilogy. Yeah, I'm kind of ridiculous that way. I have a lot of ridiculous opinions on various things, like movies, video games, books, TV shows, the like. So yeah, The Return of the Jedi is actually my favorite of the Star Wars movies. Go figure. So why is that? I'll tell you. So, so first off, the first part of the movie, I have kind of, it's kind of a mixed feeling, but honestly, I, the first part of the movie is when the heroes go to Jabba the Hutt. I... Personally, I really like that scene, that whole subplot. Subplot, because honestly, I really like the whole environment of of Jabba's. Sorry, I thought I heard something. I really like the environment of Jabba the Hutt's criminal little enterprise. I really like it. This is the gross, this the seedy, shady aliens. That's something that this movie does a lot better than I think the the other two movies. In The New Hope, you only had one scene with a bunch of alien creatures, and then with The Empire Strikes Back, you only have Yoda, who's... It's mostly just humans, and that's not... I always find that really boring and with sci-fi and fantasy, when it's just humans or human lookalikes as the... as their creatures that they put in there. Not that there's anything... Not that if anyone wants to do that for their stories, they... Not that that's a wrong thing. It's just personal preference of mine, but I really like the... The gross. I really like the. Really like the whole place, and honestly, <laughs> this may sound weird, but I, Jabba the Hutt is actually one of my favorite characters in the whole Star Wars, films. I really like his design. He's just this gross giant, 
that space slug, and he's really not a... He's really disgusting with his constant drooling and his... His, his body, his, he's just really gross, and he's got a very particular fetishes, if you will, with how he, he keeps his, his women. <laughs> no, I'm not going to stop this. But yeah. I've always had, I always always like Jabba the Hutt. He's a very, just his design. He's one of my favorite film creatures of all time. I also kind of, I also respect his personality. He's just this horrible monster and he's very arrogant, very, very hedonistic. But he just pretty much owns it and I really got kind of got to respect that on him. Although, there's one thing I will say about about him and the whole had that whole subplot is that it feels almost a bit disjointed from the rest of the movie. Not that it's unnecessary because it was necessary to show how they rescued Han Solo, but I don't know. I kind I always feel sad when I always felt sad when that part was over because I always liked the aliens and aliens under his employee and all the creatures that we see like the Rancor, the Rancor is cool, and also the Sarlacc. On a, a side note, the Sarlacc is probably the most di disturbing and kind of depressing things I've ever heard of. Like you, when you get eaten by it, you have to you're slowly digested over a thousand years, and from what I understand, you're kept alive that entire time. That is really unsettling. But yeah, I feel like I feel like there could have been a way to possibly. I don't know if, to. Sorry, I feel like there could have been a better way of keeping Jabba around as a major part in the entire movie, not that it should have taken away from the Empire threat as a whole, but it just feels like it's kind of just like it's not doesn't really do much for the rest of the story, because once it's over, it's kind of forgotten about. Oh, and a few other things, like I feel like Luke's plan to rescue Han is a bit kind of all over the place. Like, was he really meaning to get in, get nearly killed twice by by the gangster. Also, the mo most notorious thing I think is the way they do d Boba Fett really dirty in this movie. The, the the way he gets killed off, he doesn't really do too much outside of like wrap Luke around with a just wrap up Luke with his whip cord and then gets and then he gets his his jetpack gets malfunctioned by by a fluke accident when well, Han, Han, sorry I'm really bad at talking right now when Han Solo is, is still recovering from his his near blindness. He just accidentally taps him in the back with, it, with his spear, and his jetpack goes haywire, and he ends up getting eaten by the Sarlacc, and that's it. Like, for such an intimidating-looking character, he's, he doesn't really do too much in either of these movies, and that's really depro that's really unfortunate. Yeah, I always really liked the whole first scene, even though it's kind of short. A lot shorter than I remember it being. But yeah, and the rest of the movie... And it also has a. I really like the action scene over the Sarlacc pit. That's a. That was a really entertaining fight. And then the rest of the movie, we go, we get introduced to the emp. We get introduced to the emperor, who is who's one of very intimidating, very awesome foe. I, Darth Vader, I think, is still a better character, but the emperor is definitely very menacing, very scary. Like his theme when he first shows up in the movie is with the chanting choir, like in the background for the music. It's just really really creepy and really says the movie that he is the big bad he is the real villain of the whole series I also I also really like that bike chase when we go to Endor the bike chase with with Han no not Han uh, Luke Leia and the stormtroopers that's a really fun entertaining scene this movie I think has the probably the best action out of all of the original three it also introduced also introduces some more characters like the infamous you know, Admiral Akbar, the it's a trap guy. <laughs> he's a, he's good too, I guess. But one thing I really like about this movie is the conflict between Luke with Luke. Like he's struggling to know what to do with with Darth Vader. That's one of the things I really like about the about the plot twist that Darth Vader is Luke's father. Like not many fantasy stories have the hero or the villain be related to each other. It's, I think that's a very nice thing, and it just makes such a really good conflict of morality for a main character to go through. Like, of course, he has to defeat Darth Vader if he wants to help save the Empire, 
not the Empire, save the universe and restore the Republic and the Jedi, but how can he do that when his the main villain is his own father? That's that's one that's a really great conflict that adds a lot more layers to to Luke and Darth Vader too. I really like that scene where, where Luke turns himself into Vader and they're both talking. Bef like Luke's trying to save Vader and try to turn him back to the light side. And yeah, it's a nice little scene where they're not having to fight, and also see some new sides to Darth Vader. But then, but yeah, one of the biggest things on in this movie that many people didn't really like, I think, is was, was the main problem that many people didn't like were the Ewoks. They're these little, tiny little, little, little fuzzy teddy bear-like creatures that live on this forest planet, and they are kind of silly and goofy creatures that really tone down the movie in a way and I don't know I really can't bring myself to hate them that I find them cute and fun and funny I just I understand why some people don't hate don't like them but I think a lot of the, their hate is overblown I just can't really bring myself to dislike them I just have a lot of fun watching them and the whole final well, the whole final third of this movie were with the whole battle between the rebellion on the on Endor or the space battle with the rebellion in space trying to that's redundant with the rebellion in space trying to take out the death star and Luke and Luke's final conflict with the emperor and Darth Vader that's that was another great part because we're seeing Luke make up his mind like will he turn to the dark side will he will he strike down his father or, or the emperor in his rage trying to think of other things to say yeah the whole final arc is is a lot of fun and i forgot to mention that one scene where luke goes to see and to see yoda for the last time before he dies yeah we another thing it reveals is that luke and leia were originally were actually brother and sister which kind of at this whole scene where he's in on dagobah for the last time has some weird things because it's cool to see like Han and you know, Luke and Leia actually have a more bigger connection to each other than originally thought. Although it does add some weird aspects to this trilogy when you think about it. Like when in The Empire Strikes Back when Leia kisses his Luke to make Han jealous. That's kind of awkward considering that they are siblings. And also Obi-Wan Kenobi when his, his, re his reasons for not wanting to tell Luke about of Darth Vader's true origin is kind of sh kind of sketchy. He says that he told... Like, you know what he says. He's like, I did tell you from a different point of view, from a certain point of view. I'm just paraphrasing. don't remember the exact line. But it's pretty... Not a good thing to teach for... To teach to kids. This whole... He's basically lying to try to dodge blame, which he really should have owned up to the fact that he did it. I heard some other YouTubers say that he... He should have just said that he was afraid that that Luke could have been t seduced himself. I think, yeah, I think the point they were saying was that Luke could have been seduced himself to the dark side if he knew Darth Vader was his father all along. I feel like that could have been a better explanation, but better than him just saying that the truth is relative and to certain people. That that's not true. That is not a good thing. To, that's not good. So. I'm sorry if I'm really scatterbrained right now. I'm just... I'm not good with talking with people on certain things. So hopefully this is making sense to you. What... What I really like about this movie is just how well it, it ends everything. It just ends everything with a nice... Gives everything nice closure. Like Han is finally free from his smuggling life. He's free to... He's no longer having Jabba the Hutt and his men chasing him behind his back. The Empire has been dealt a heavily, heavy blow, which, although I know that the Empire is not completely defeated, considering that they're still around for later extended universe stuff. And then they, they have more conflicts that eventually fully end the war later on, but you know what I'm saying. And Luke finally completes his Jedi training. He is, he is defeated... 
the Emperor and Darth and he saved Darth Vader, turning him back to Anakin. And like all these all these plot threads are given are given a nice resolution, and it just feels nice seeing it all come to an end. Like like when you see the celebration on Endor, like Luke giving his father a respectful little burial, respectful funeral, even though he's the only one there. It's still very nice and very humbling feeling. And one thing that I do like seeing in one of the in one of the special editions, it's nice seeing like all these other planets that you see in like the prequels, like Coruscant and Naboo and and also Bespin. You see them cheering after this huge, after the rebellion has made has has won this huge war. And you're seeing these people celebrate as well. Just that last celebration, honestly makes me feel happy just seeing it all end in such a nice happy note after the Empire Strikes Back have has a big cliffhanger ending it just feels nice I always felt sad whenever this movie ended when I was a kid because I never wanted I never wanted to leave this the universe it was just such a cool great universe to to be a part of and I it always felt sad letting watching it end and go back to the real world because the real world sucks some things I should have noted is that some special edition changes are kind of weird because, like, in this final celebration, the final celebration has, as you know, when Luke looks on and sees the Force ghosts of Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda, in the special edition in the 2004 release, they changed the original actor for Anakin to be Hayden Christensen from the prequels, while Obi-Wan is still played by Alec Guinness and, and Yoda is still his old puppet look. I... Does anyone know why they did that? Was it because the original actor who played Anakin in the, in the original theatrical version of Return of the Jedi died or, and they couldn't use him again or or something? Like, it just feels weird because, like, why is Anakin young and, and Obi-Wan old? It, it's just weird. I, I don't really hate it, but I do find it just funny that they did that. Honestly... Yeah, I can never. Even though I acknowledge that there are many pro, that there are plenty of problems with this movie, I just have a lot of fun with it. I have a lot of good fond memories, and it's just the one I look back on with the most fondness. So yeah, I was, even with the flaws, it doesn't take away from any of the great excitement that Return of the Jedi has, or any of the original trilogy. This was just a, a lot of fun to watch. I'm glad I finally rewatched these movies these after all these years because I have. Just wanted to get my full opinion on the movie yeah, again. I hope my th I hope my I hope these videos make sense in what I'm trying to say. Not don't really expect many people to hear these. I just wanted to put my voice out there and and let that be the end of it. And honestly, I think these won't, these videos weren't going to be the most interesting because everyone likes the original trilogy already. It's going to be more interesting when I have to talk about the prequels and especially the sequels because. Oh boy, those are gonna be those are gonna be fun to talk about. I feel like I already know my opinions on at least the Phantom Menace and the Revenge of the Sith at least. So, well, I'll have to watch them again in the meantime. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on on the Return of the Jedi and pretty much the original trilogy as a whole. They are such they are timeless. They are timeless masterpieces. And I really would love, to, can't wait to watch them again. I'm going to be watching them over and over again for a long time. Well, I don't really watch movies that often, but you know what I mean. Yeah, these are such great movies and ones that I think feel like everyone should watch at least once in their lives. So yeah, take care. So that's my review. Take care, guys. I, and I hope to see you guys for the next time for my reviews on the prequels. Those will be interesting. Bye.